Support Bluefin University in the production of more videos by visiting the link in the description below where you'll find more details. Thank you and enjoy. Next up is the gold foil experiment by Ernest Rutherford in 1911 where he discovered the atomic nucleus. His experiment was pretty significant because it disproved the plum pudding model by proving the existence of a small, dense, positively charged nucleus at the center of the atom. So how did he do that? What was his sort of setup and how did he observe and conclude all that he concluded? Well, he set up this apparatus that had uh, an alpha emitter which shot alpha particles at a thin strip of gold foil. Okay, shot it at a thin strip of gold foil. And around this gold foil was this circular screen that would basically detect the alpha particles by giving off a flash of light when it was hit by that alpha particle. So I, I've said the alpha, word alpha particle, like the words alpha particle a few times now, and I haven't really even talked about what it is. An alpha particle is a small, positively charged particle that is much smaller than an atom, but 7,000 times bigger than an electron. So an alpha particle specifically are, have a, have a, positively, a positive two charge. Okay. So, um, what happened was they shot, they took this alpha emitter and it had, uh, it shot alpha particles at this really thin strip of gold foil. And, um, we want to really know what, what did they notice and what happened. So, a, a lot of the, um, particles went straight through and there was a, a lot of detection on the screen right back here, right? Tons back here. And there were some, some situations in which it lit up over here and and over here so and what was kind of crazy is that there were some some cases in which the detection was over here or even back here okay so they noticed that most of the flashes were directly behind the gold foil directly behind the gold foil which meant that basically that alpha particles were going straight through, straight through the gold foil and to the other side. Right? So what did Rutherford conclude based on that observation? Based on that observation, they concluded that he concluded that the atom is mostly empty space. If these particles are just traveling straight through, the atom must mostly be empty space. Um, but what he did notice is that there were very few one in every 20,000 drastic deflections, right, or major deflections. So there were some that were pretty, that might have been pretty minor, where, you know, if you, if you notice, instead of all of them going straight in a straight line, there might have been some that came off like this, or like this. But there were some that came pretty much back in the direction where the alpha particles came from. So that was kind of crazy. And so the conclusion that they drew from that was that there must be a tiny, dense, positively charged nucleus deflecting the alpha particles. So let's think about why this would be the conclusion based on the hypothesis. The hypothesis was based off of the, uh, the plum pudding model. Okay, the plum pudding model. So the plum pudding atoms look like this, right, where they have that positively charged fluff positively charged fluff, and these electrons. So the hypothesis was that if we shoot, if he shoots alpha particles at this thin, this thin gold foil, this gold foil was supposed to be a few atoms thick, right? So if we think about these just being the actual gold atoms, um, sort of aligning themselves like this, shooting these alpha particles at them, if the plum pudding model is the case, right? If that's if that's what atoms actually look like, then these these particles should go straight through. Why is that? Well, because these electrons, if they're like the dense particles that are um, contained within an atom, but they're seven thousand times smaller than the alpha particle then the alpha particle should have no problem sort of running right through these these electrons. It's kind of like, the way I imagine it is like a bowling ball 
being launched at a tiny like poppy seed or like a, a BB or something, right? If you think about um, the alpha particle being the bowling ball and the electrons being 7,000 times smaller, like the size of, like I said, a little BB or um, a tiny, tiny ball, um, then those the, the tiny ball is not going to deflect the, the bowling ball anywhere, right? So most of them should go straight through. So that was the hypothesis, because it was based on the plum pudding model. So when they saw that there was deflections like this, where the, the alpha particle would actually go backwards in the direction that it came from, that was pretty crazy to them. That was pretty crazy that this, that these, that this situation even happened. So what that led them to believe is that there must have been something in the atom that was dense enough and large enough to deflect the alpha particle backwards. So the actual result led to what was called the nuclear model, which we'll actually talk about in the next video. Um, but I'll kind of show what the result looked like here. Okay, so it's just a moment, actually. So they reason that there must be something tiny, dense, and positively charged at the center of the atom like this, such that the, the alpha particles would come in, and most of them would go straight through, but there would be some cases in which the alpha particle would come in, bump into something tiny and dense, and deflect off like this. Maybe I should do that in a different color. I should or just circle it. See how this is kind of directed off course, right? And this one, if it, if it hits the right way, it can actually be directed backwards, right? Or this one kind of being knocked off course. So since there were so few of these drastic deflections, that, that led to the idea that it, it must have been pretty small. It's been a tiny, tiny, dense um, situation in there. And because these alpha particles have a plus two charge, it, he reasoned that that positive, what, what used to be the positive fluff, is not actually positive fluff in the plum pudding model. It must be a positively charged particles there. And so he called this little entity at the center of the atom uh, a nucleus. Okay deflecting the alpha particles. And it makes sense that if it, it's positively charged, that these, these, um, it would repel a positively charged alpha particle. So Rutherford basically concluded that the nucleus must contain small, positively charged particles, that he called protons. And so he developed the nuclear, uh, the nuclear model of the atom, which we'll see, like I said, in the next video. Hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, be sure to hit it with a like and subscribe for more content. Also, follow Move University on the different social media links in the description below. Thank you and happy studying.